Hi everyone, welcome to today's little uh, experiment. So today I'm going to be using my little inspiration cards and going to be trying to create a brand new critter. So uh, what cards to pick? So I'm going to pick, I think I'm going to do four today. So take my cards, shuffle them. And uh, I'm still doing absolutely tons of these, still trying to make lots of them. So let's see, I don't even know what ones I'm going to pick yet. Um, I've got two types of orange there. So as you can see, I've got a fair few amount. I've got different um, types all over the place. I'm just going to stick a few on here while I shuffle them. That one goes there because that wasn't a problem. And hopefully we should be able to create something quite snazzy. I will get around to laminating these once I've done a few more. I'm trying to think of what I fancy today trying out. A bit different. I think four is quite a good number. So let's see. Two. What I'm gonna go for? Let's go for gold. Go for an orange. Go for a red. Because I'm gonna be working in black and white today, so I'm not so bothered about colours. Uh, let's go for brown. So that's four cards. And these are going to create my creature. So we'll put them there. And stack everything back up. So let's uh, see what we're creating today. It's a harpy. Hmm. That card seems to like me. A lionfish. That card seems to like me. Oh, a short faced bear. Hoo hoo, we're getting complex. And a deer. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. So, this is my challenge to create a creature from a harpy, deer, lionfish, and a short-faced bear. Right. Okay, I've got some ideas. So, what do I know about each creature? Uh, so basically, deer, I've not put a specific type of deer, so I could pick from any type of deer. That's absolutely brilliant. That gives me some good ideas of which deers to pick, if you get the deer. Because um, deer are deer to me, as you can appreciate. Harpy, uh, we've got a mythical creature which has wings and human features, talons. Lionfish, a venomous fish, uh, now classed as an invasive species in some areas, I believe. It has stripes. It's called a lionfish, but it's got stripes like a zebra. Go figure. And a short-faced bear, which was a very large uh, prehistoric type bear. Very, very powerful. Deep jaws. Long limbs. Hmm. So, let's see. Yep, got it. Got it, got it, got it. So I roughly know the skeletals for all of these creatures. And that's what I'm going to be relying on. But today, instead of just going into the drawing, I'm going to do a smaller drawing on the A5 paper to give a rough idea. So, let's see. Hmm. So this is my smaller pad. This is a smoother paper. So let's see what I'm thinking.
So now I'm going to take this very rough concept idea. I mean, this is really rough for me. And then I'm going to try and turn it into something a bit more. Woohoo. And I might change this as I go. So I've got a rough idea of what, what I'm up to. And that's really all I need right now.
So there you go, a very, very rough creature, very quickly created, well, ish. So we had the inspiration of a lionfish, a harpy, a deer, and a short-faced bear. And from those ideas, did a very, very rough sketch, showing elements of each of those ideas, and starting to think about the process. From that, started to do a little bit of refinement. More ideas came ahead, made changes, and then came up with this very, very rough concept sketch. And then from this process on is where I would get my neat, proper paper out, get the much finer pencils. I do have a 0.3 somewhere around here and refine the drawing right down, correct the anatomical mistakes because there's a hell of a lot of them in here. Uh, in fact, I am very tempted, if I do this again, I'm going to drop the hip to be more bear-like. So the hip would be cut off kind of from that point. So it would curve right down, much more bear-like. And then I would also look at making amendments to the face to elongate it, but still keep that bare snout. So bring it, even bring in a curve, a bit like on a deer. And also I'd be tempted to actually bring in more frills. But also my frills are very static. So they're very kind of stuck up. Whereas with a moving animal, uh, frills and such, they'll have a wobble, so there'll be movement. And depending on motion as well. And also, there will be changes in shape, in growth. Has one had a nib been nibbled on? Are there holes in them? Are there tears? And if there's a tear, how does that affect it? So those are the sorts of shapes that I could then bring into these frills because if this is a predatory animal, it's going to come into some form of conflict. And so there's all those questions that come in. Also, I can look at the, the what, the how, the who, the why of the creature. So what environment does it live in? Does it have to fight for food? Does it scavenge? How dense and strong are these uh, fins? Could it walk for a bramble bush without being torn? Or can it only stay to like the plains, the grasslands? Because these fins are very delicate. Do the alpha animals have taller fins? Or do they have taller and stronger antlers? So there's all those questions that you can put into the drawing. And then there's scenes where would you want to draw this creature so you can build up and build up and build up and that's where your imagination can really be let loose but always try and think of real life scenarios so look at the history books and say well short faced bear lived at this time it hunted in these areas um, but deer at the time hunted in well lived in these areas so again let your imagination run loose but uh, always keep an, keep an eye on it and catch up with it. So I'm actually going to add in a little bit more shadow. Just so that I can get a rough idea of dimension and depth. I'm just doing this with a quick pencil. If I do get a chance I will do a proper version of this but this is just a demo. A quick demo. Nothing fancy, nothing that detailed. Bit fun. And that's, that's the thing, drawing, you still need to always keep it fun. When drawing gets too serious, you need to step away, take a break, and come back to it, because once it gets too serious, you lose the enjoyment, you lose the love of it, and you lose the passion. And once that happens, it's very, very, very difficult to get back into it. And 
Been shadow. And if I want these to be more feathery on the back end or the front end, I can, if I was doing a much more close up view, I can then add in, say, quills uh, and more feathery designs. So there you go, that is how I would use the little inspiration cards that I've made to help inspire myself to get out and get drawing and get more elaborate, get creative. So I hope this has helped inspire you guys to have a go at making your own little inspiration cards. It's well worth it, it's good fun, it gets you thinking and it gets you being creative and it's great. But if you are stuck in that evil artist block and you don't know what to draw and you're sat around and you're like, oh, what do I draw? Just literally write down, even if you just do it on colour post-it notes, write down a load of animals. Um, it doesn't even have to be animals if you don't like drawing animals. Look around your room, draw furniture. So what happens when you put a chair, a table, a footstool and um, an item of clothing together? So find those inspirations. I mean, for me, it's always going to be more animal based because I love drawing organic animals and organic things, uh, even plants. I am doing a set of these with plants on them. So you might see a rhino, me drawing a rhino with a flower sticking out its horn, something crazy like that. So as I say, I hope this has helped inspire you guys. So until next time, all the best everybody. Have a lovely time. Get creative and a happy drawing to you all.